Um, so, Owen Curry is on the line and he's going to talk to us about that and other travel matters. Owen, good morning. Uh, good morning, Pat. Editor of Air and Travel magazine, but an interest in all things to do with uh, tourism. Uh, talk to us about the regulations. I mean, does a hotel like the Station House Hotel have a, a valid excuse in saying, we don't have clarity, so we muddle through the best we can? Or were they in breach of a very clear regulation? The regulations are um, as if they're, they're, they're being delivered at press conferences, Pat. The, so everybody is scrambling to make out what does it actually mean. Um, the regulations are clear enough. The 50 is pretty much set in stone. So when these guys went to 81, they were, uh, they were clearly breaching the regulation. Trying to put a partition in, uh, most hoteliers I've spoken to say, no, that doesn't count. But if you have two golf societies, for instance, you had the Doll Golf Society in the clubhouse and you had the Senate Golf Society in the station house, I don't think we'd be looking at uh, this sort of um, the scale of the reaction. Uh, we might be looking at any reaction at all this morning. What everybody is doing is going back to the Irish Hotels Federation. They've been very, very good. They're very black and white. Um, but what they're doing is reacting to, as I say, not legislation with clauses and subclauses, and this is what you do in a certain scenario, but really trying to interpret what's coming from uh, medical people in uh, uh, at press conferences, when in fact the Department of Tourism, uh, Falch Ireland guidelines and everything follows, but not in the sort of timeline you need to cope with events like this. So you get a government press conference, and they say, this is what we're doing, uh, and... They haven't talked to the Hotels Federation or anyone else to kind of clarify what they're doing and to hear counter arguments because there's no one better equipped to kind of point out the folly or the wisdom of regulations than those practitioners themselves. They can say something's workable, something's not workable. Whereas in the Department of Health, they mightn't have that kind of expertise. That's uh, the pattern. Now, early in the cycle, you'd have always said we're dealing with such a scale of a crisis, it's not going to happen. But even as things have developed, we haven't had consultation. A lot of the stuff that I would have talked about in travel, there has been zero consultation. In fact, the task force, recovery task force set up for the aviation industry, interim and final reports, both ignored. Even within the governments, you can, you're hearing uh, the departments uh, you know, off the record saying that they're not being consulted. So the Department of Foreign Affairs line or the Department of Tourism and Transport line on something is not really getting through to the Department of Health. And of course, we're all hearing uh, what's happening at the cabinet table. Now, that's all of uh, sort of academic interest to people who are want to follow politics. But where it impacts is on a hotel is how, what do you do, for instance, with a wedding who arrives and say, we want to drink till one o'clock in the morning? The answer to that, by the way, is there are different rules for residents of a hotel than there are for people who come into a hotel. An example of that, if you're a resident in a hotel and lots of people are staycationing in hotels, you get your 105 minutes for your meal. If you're a resident, you get something extra. You get an hour pre-dinner drink and an hour post-dinner drink. But, and, but you can't, you know continue on in the residence bar as we used to in the pre-COVID days. That's a little bit of a surprise to some of the people booking. Now, some of the hotels have noticed to avoid people bringing their own drink back up to the room. They've had a sort of a, almost a takeaway service offered. Those sort of things don't apply if you have brought a friend in from the local uh, town and all the rules that apply to a resident, resident do not apply. When it comes to an event, but very, very clear. Well, Sorry? Let's be practical about this. I, I'm uh, at dinner in the hotel yes. and I'm at the 7.30 sitting. I'm finished by nine. I go into the bar and I'm entitled to an hour extra. Drink. If you're a resident. Someone else is on the half eight and they gobble up their dinner. They're finished by a quarter to ten and they join uh, the, they go into the residence bar and we're expecting the barman or bar woman to have Police a stopwatch it. on each per, each resident. Come yeah. on. And they're asking, the, really they're asking awesome. hotels to release it. And I mean, it, we, it's the obvious thing in the world. Once alcohol gets involved, all the social distancing and all the other time things uh, get frayed. But it's actually back to the hotel to police it. Now, this is really important for Clifton is that it's uh, the organiser of the event who really is the one who is supposed to make out, work out in advance what the rules are and communicate that to the people he invites. So everything goes back 
to uh, the organiser of the event, Donny Cassidy, and what uh, he told people who were coming there. Because it's quite clear, I mean, there's been a lot of call for resignations and a lot of, uh, some very small number of Dáil members, but a large number of senators. And in the nature of Senate elections, and it was election year, senators will be bringing councillors as guests to an event like this. But it's quite clear a lot of the people who were there thought they were not in breach of regulations, but ended up in breach of regulations. And that comes back to the organiser. When they say they contacted the IHF, the IHF told them pretty much the regulations are changing. Uh, they changed overnight the night before. And, but it, very importantly, the number 50 didn't change overnight. So that's not a get out clause for the organisers. But there would be lots of ways around it that hotels are using their spaces. Many of them have several dining rooms. Another really important thing for, and this applies to restaurants, hotels, six at a table. Some of those tables would have had 10 at them. Six at a table and their family groups. Family groups, uh, you cannot have six singletons, even if there's only six at the table, it cannot be six singletons. The regulations as they stand, as I say, they're coming from press conferences, but there's been, it has to be said to the, in, in, for the hotel industry, there have been no incidents they have been running, they've opened their hotels and they've been running this uh, confused and all over the places the regulations are. They have been do, erring on the side of caution all the way through this. Now, let's move on. Uh, aviation, obviously, um, numbers through the various airports are uh, much reduced. The, the real question for airlines is, though, their forward planning, because they decide on their schedules and how they will deploy their aircraft and where they'll position their aircraft. What's happening for Ireland's connectivity because of COVID-19? We're doing really, really well with connectivity. We have about 100 flights out of Dublin today. We'd have had 80 um, in July and we'd have been down to 12 at the bottom of the cycle. Uh, the load factors, it varies. Uh, they're around, they can be uh, very, very small. Some listeners would probably text in advantage, uh, cases of three or four people on an aircraft, but they've been around 25 to 40%. Big question comes end of October, what happens winter? And it does, the decisions are being made now on that. It's very interesting to see that uh, the number of flights, particularly by Ryanair, and Ryanair have 1,400 flights a day uh, in the sky across Europe. They're by far the airline that's returned first to the air. EasyJet would be second by about 800. But their winter capacity out of Ireland is going to shrivel to a dribble. And it's very, very unusual to look at the sort of prices you can get to Barcelona, uh, 25 euro return or um, 20 euro return in September, going up in November and December. That's a very unusual cycle. So that indicates that we're going to have our connectivity slashed back through the winter, largely because um, the government policy, the green list, which you know didn't really work from the start. But what is more important for Ireland's inbound tourism is what's happening in 2021. We've seen two of the American airlines pull their Shannon services for 2021. American Airlines, to their credit, have scheduled it in with a new aircraft. But the real game is going to be what happens from St. Patrick's Day on, particularly as increasingly looks uh, the case. We're, we're still in that cycle of clamping down on the virus and then when the clamp is released, it beginning to rise again. That's the pattern, uh, speckled pattern all over Europe. That's what's been happening. And, uh, you know, if we're back into that for next summer, we really need a plan B as uh, for a travel policy because we haven't come up even with a plan A yet for Ireland. Owen Corrie, editor of Air and Travel magazine. Uh, thank you very much. We'll thank you, Pat.